You are welcome to UTMA class. I will be taking you physics. This class is specially organized for you. As we know that success is one of the two important things that students are running after in the academics. So I will be taking you physics as I've said. Uh, let's start from the introduction. This class we are going to treat some topics that are very very important as we have gone through the question that is being asked by Jam. So we are going to go through all those topics that is being treated, the way they ask their questions and the way we need to answer those questions. We are going to see some topics like measurements and units. We are going to consider something of motion, work energy and power, scalars and vectors, friction, gravitational fields, equilibrium of forces, simple machine, elasticity, prayer, and so on and so forth. We are going to start with this, uh, the first topics under measurements and units. And then uh, under these topics, candidates are expected to know how to identify the unit of lens, air, and funnel. At the same time, the uses of different measuring instruments and how to determine the lens, surface areas, and volume of regular and irregular bodies. How to identify the unit of mass, how to identify the unit of time, use different time measuring devices. Then, how do we relate the fundamental quantities and then uh, the derived quantities together? So, under this class, I mean, under this topic, I will be starting with measurements and units. measurements and units i want you to follow me is one of the most important topics and it is very simple so if you see a question under this topic it should not be hard for you very simple you see it's, good. So it's supposed to be a bonus for you measurement and units under this i will quickly summarize something on what you call physical Quantities, physical quantities, and other physical quantities. I will quickly talk about what we call fundamental quantities. We define fundamental quantities as independent quantities. When we something is independent, that is, it can stand on its own. It doesn't have to depend on other quantities before it can perform its operation. We call it independent quantities. It's a quantity in which it is an independent quantity in the sense that other quantities depend on them. Other quantities depend on them. So what are the examples of fundamental quantities? Please follow me. It's as simple as that. We have lengths. Examples. Length, which is L, and the unit is meter. We have mass represented by L, and the unit is kilogram. These are the examples of fundamental quantities. We have time, time t, and this unit is what seconds. We have electric current. Electric current. Electric current. Okay. And the unit is ampere. The unit is ampere for electric current. Okay. Um, electric current high in ampere. Current, electric current, the, the symbol is high for time, the symbol is T. For mass, the symbol is M. For length, the symbol is L. Then we have temperature. The unit is Kelvin. We have what we call luminous intensity. For luminous intensity, um, we use L. And the unit, the unit is candela, C A. Okay. 
All these ones are examples of fundamental quantities. I want to believe you know all these things. I'm only trying to revise with you what you have been taught. So, length is L, mass, time, electric coin, temperature, luminous intensity. These are the examples of fundamental quantities. Please take note of all this. As we'll be going through our questions, now you'll be seeing how the question is being asked on this. Then, that's one of our fundamental quantities. Let me quickly move to derived quantities. Derived quantities. For derived quantities, derived quantities, from the word derived, you know what I say derivation. That is, we are trying to bring something out from another thing. When you are deriving, you are trying to bring something out from another thing. So derived quantities are the quantities that are formed from fundamental quantities. That is the simple way behind it. They are formed from fundamental quantities. We call them dependent quantities. Dependent quantities. Derived quantities are dependent quantities. In the sense that they depend the formation of one or more uh, physical and the fundamental quantities will give us a derived quantity, the combination of one or more fundamental quantities will give us a derived quantities. For example, example, let me take number one. Let's say we have volume. Volume is an example of derived quantities. Before we can have volume, it will be a formation of length times breadth times height. Can you see that? Length is a fundamental quantity. Breadth is another name, just another and uh, another name for length. Height is another name for length. Both of them are length. Okay? Which means volume is being formed from fundamental quantities. Length as breadth as height are coming together to give us form dependent quantities or derived quantities. Let me look at area. Area is just length times breadth. Let me give you more examples. Look at velocity. Before we can have what we call the velocity. Something have to come together, okay? Velocity is displacement over time. Displacement is a distance. Time is an example of fundamental quantities. Displacement, which is can, can also be referred to as a distance. It's also an example of fundamental quantities. When it's come together, it gives what we call velocity. Let me let me add this. What about speed? That one is distance over time. What is given between displacement and distance? Both of them can be referred to as a distance. Okay. But displacement is a vector quantity, while distance is a scalar quantity. Because if we are to define displacement, we say distance traveled in a specified direction. Okay? And that's the difference between displacement and distance. When we get to scalars and vector, you understand better. But for now, velocity, displacement over time, speed, distance over time. And that is how derived quantities is being formed. Let's not forget. We also have, we also have what to call fundamental units. And these are the units I've given to you now. All these units are the fundamental units. So that the, the units of the fundamental quantities are called fundamental units. The units of the fundamental quantities are called fundamental units. 
The same thing with derived. The unit of derived quantities we are called derived units. The unit of derived quantities are called derived units. For example, follow. We have length. The unit is meter. Breadth. The unit is meter. Height. The unit is meter. Then you say meter times meter times meter. We have meter cube. That is the unit of follow. So this unit is a derived unit. What about area? Length. The unit is meter. Breadth. The unit is meter. Then you put it together. Meter plus meter. We have meter squared. Velocity, which is displacement over time. The unit of displacement is meter. The unit of time is seconds. When you put it together, we have meter per seconds. Or you can write it like this per seconds.